Hello, this video is to show how to use moment distribution method to solve a moment frame example. Moment distribution method is a very accurate approximate method by making assumptions of the moment at each joint. And today's example is a moment frame example. And we want to find the moment at each joint, as well as draw the shear and the moment diagrams for member B, C, E. Okay, so in order to solve the problem, and first we need to cut the structure at each joint, the fixed connections. After cut, we divide the whole frame into four separate elements. So we have a member one, AB, member two, BC, member three, CD, and a member four, CE. And also we notice the moment of inertia of each member of this problem are different. Because moment distribution method is based upon the relative stiffness of each member. So it's easier for us to set the ratio of moment of inertia. And for example, if we let I equals to IBC equals to 400 inch to the force, and IAB equals to 600 over 400 times I, and equals to 1.5i. And for column CD, we use 500 divided by 400 and times I and get 1.25i. And remember CE equals to the 400 divided by 400 times I and equals to I. In that case, we just use the relative ratio to calculate the distribution factor. After the cut at fixed connections, and we can find the approximate structure like this. For this approximate method, the structure use fixed support to replace the original fixed connection. And at B, there's approximation. And same for C. Because the original structure is a fixed connection, now we use fixed support to replace the original fixed connection. Okay. And after we do this cut, and it will generate fixed end moment. And for example, member one, member one has a pinned support at A and fixed support at B. And based on this support condition and a load pattern, we have a 3K in the middle of column AB and a 2K at support B. And we know that for any load directly at a support, it will not generate any moment in the member. So we just use this 3K to calculate the fixed end moment. Based on the load pattern and support conditions, member AB at A end is a pin support. So pin support never has a moment. Then we have Fixed end moment at A equals to zero. 
at the end, we will use the fixed end moment table and use one end fixed and the other end pinned or roller. So this is the case for us to calculate the moment for member AB. And we notice that at fixed end, the moment equals to 3PL over 16. So we just use this equation to calculate fixed end moment at B. So equals to 3PL over 16. That's the equation. And direction, and according to, according to the direction of the load, and we know that the fixed end moment at B is clockwise, so it will be positive. The sum convention for moment distribution table is clockwise moment is positive and counterclockwise moment is negative. After we get the equation and we can calculate the moment based on the load and the geometry, L equals to 16 feet and P equals to 3K. Then we can calculate the moment at B end equals to positive 3 times 3K times 16 feet over 16 and equals to positive 9 keep feet. Positive means clockwise. This member AB. Then we'll calculate the fixed end moment for member BC. Member BC, both end are fixed. So according to the support conditions and the load pattern, uniform load, we will use the fixed end moment table the corresponding case to calculate fixed end moment. So we will have W L squared over 12. We use those moment formula to calculate fixed end moment from member BC. So equals to W L squared over 12. And we notice that for B end, the moment is counterclockwise, so is negative. On the CB side, on the C side is clockwise, so it will be positive W L squared over 12. Then based on the value, W equals to point five, keep per linear thought. L equals to 24. Divide by 12. Then we get fixed end moment at B end for member BC equals to negative 24, keep feet. Negative means counterclockwise. And on the CB side, equals to positive 24, keep feet. Positive means clockwise. Then we're down with member CB, fix end moment. Then we move to member three. Member three, column CD, no loading, no loading on member CD. So if a member has no load on it, means it won't generate any of those reactions. The reactions 
will be equal to zero. Okay, so we have the C end equals to zero because no loading. And for the D end, no loading also is a pin support. It's definitely a zero at D end because of the pin support. Then we're down with member three, fix end moment. Because of no loading and both end are zeros. Then we move to member four, CE. Member four is both end are fixed, subject to a uniform load. And it's the same load pattern and support condition as a member two. So we still use the equation right here to calculate fixed end moment, WL squared over 12. On the C side, counterclockwise, so we we'll use negative WL squared over 12 and equals to negative 0.5 cube feet per linear foot times 12 squared over 12. The length is 12 feet. So we get the fixed end moment equals to negative based on calculation equals to negative six keep feed. On the east side, clockwise, so it's positive, WL squared over 12, and equals to 0.5 times 12 squared over 12, and equals to positive six keep feed. Then we're down with the fixed end moment for member four. After that, we notice unbalanced moment at the joint B. We have unbalanced moment equals to nine minus 24, negative 15 keep feet. And at C, another approximation joint, we get the moment right here and unbalance the moment at C. Equals to 24 plus zero minus six. Then equals to 18 keep feet. Moment distribution is to distribute the unbalanced moment at a fixed connection based on the relative stiffness of each member. So now we need to calculate the stiffness of each member. Start with member one and member one AB. A is a pin support. Then we can calculate the stiffness, rotation stiffness at A for member AB equals to zero because it's a pin to support. And for member AB at B end, the B end is fixed and far end A is pinned. Then we'll use 
3EI over L to calculate rotation stiffness at B. KBA equals to 3EI over L I S I A B. When you calculate stiffness of each member, and you will use the moment inertia and the length of each member. Then we find that KBA equals to 3EI. IAB equals to 1.5I based on our calculation and LAB 16. Then we get KBA equals to 0.281 EI. Then we move to member two. Member two, BC, both ends are fixed. So we will calculate the rotational stiffness. We'll use 4EI. So KBC equals to 4EI BC over IBC. And then we can calculate the stiffness equals to 4EI. IBC just equals to I. And LBC 24. Then we get KBC equals to point one six seven EI. And go to the C end. C end is also a fixed connection and the other side is fixed. Then we use KCB equals to four EI over L, L is LBC. So KCB equals to four EI over 24 and equals to 0.167 EI. Then we move to member three. And member three, C and fixed, and D is a pinned. When we calculate stiffness at C side, we'll use 3EI over L. Then we have KCD equals to 3EICD over LCD. Then we get the stiffness equals to 3E times 1.25I. We just use the ratio. And LCD equals to 16 feet. Then we get KCD equals to point two three four EI. And then move to the D side. D is a pin support for the original structure. Then we know that KDC equals to zero because the original structure, this is a pin support. Then we move to the last member, CE. And for C is a fixed connection, the far end is a fixed support. Then we'll calculate the stiffness at C. We use for EI. Then we get KCE equals to four EICE over LCE. 
Did we get KCE? Equals to four EI over 12. And equals to 0.333 EI. And then the last is the E. E is a fixed support in the original structure. So we get KEC equals to infinity because it's a fixed support in the original structure. After that, we're done with the stiffness calculation. Then we will calculate the distribution factor. Start with member one. And member one, A is a pin support. So we know that the distribution factor at A equals to one. Any moment transfer to A will transfer back. So pin support cannot take any of the moment. And for the B end, we notice that the total stiffness at B. The total stiffness at B equals to KBA plus KBC. Two members connect at B. Then we find that for distribution factor of AB, distribution factor for BA equals to KBA over the total stiffness at B. And distribution factor for BC equals to KBC over the total stiffness at B. Then we can calculate since all those members has the common factor EI, we just cancel those common factors when we calculate the distribution factor. So for distribution factor of BA equals to 0.281 divided by 0.281 plus 0.167 and get distribution factor for BA equals to 0 0.627. And for distribution factor BC equals to 0 0.167 divided by 0.281 plus 0.167 and get distribution factor of BC equals to 0.373 distribution factor. Then we move to C end. And for this example, there's three members connected at C. CB, CD, and CE. All those members has the stiffness contribution. So when we calculate the relative stiffness or distribution factor of each member, we will use the stiffness of each member divided by the total stiffness. And we notice that for the total stiffness at the joint C equals to KCB plus KCD and plus KCE. And for member BC, 
distribution factor for CB equals to KCB divided by the total stiffness at C. Then we get KCB point 167 divided by point 167 plus point 234 plus point 333 and get distribution factor for CB equals to point 227. Then move to member CD. We get distribution factor for CD equals to KCD over the total stiffness at the joint C. Then we get 0.234 divided by the total 0.167 plus point two three four plus point three 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 and get distribution factor for C D equals to point three one nine. Then we move to number four C E. Then we calculate distribution factor for CE and equals to KCE over the total stiffness at C. And this equals to 0.333 divided by 0.167 plus 0.234 plus 0.333. That's the total stiffness at joint C. So we get distribution factor for CE equals to 0 0.454. Okay. And distribution factor at E side. equals to zero because it's a fixed support. In the original structure. Okay. Then we're done with the distribution factor calculation. Now we need to transfer all those information to the distribution table. In this table, okay. So now based on what we have, for the approximate structure. And we will transfer this information to the table. And for a joint, we have A, B, C. I put E first because it will shorten the carryover arrow and D. So I put E first because CE goes and fixed. And if there is a distribution moment at C, it will carry over to E. But for CD, if there's a moment, distribution moment transfer to C, it will not carry over to D because D is a pin support. So that's why I put D last. After I put the joint, then I put the member. And for AB, 
member connect to joint A, A, B. And member at B, we have two, B, A, B, A and A, B are same member, okay? and B, C. At joint C, three members, C, B. B, C and C, B are same number. And C, D. C, E. At E, E, C. D, D, C. Those the member connect to each joint. After that, we put stiffness that we just calculated. And stiffness at A equals to zero. Stiffness at B equals to 0.281 EI. And stiffness KBC equals to 0.167 EI. CB, 0.167 EI. CD, 0.234 EI. CE, 0.333. EI and EC infinity because of fixed support and DC zero pin support. Distribution factor A for pin support one and for B is point six two seven and for BC point three seven three CB point two two seven distribution factor for CD point three one nine and CE is point Four five four. E C zero because it's fixed support, and D is pin support one. And we can calculate. We can actually confirm, verify, at approximation joint. B and C originally a fixed connection. And we approximate these two joint as fixed support. So at approximation joint, the distribution factor, if you add them together, should be one. The sum of distribution factor at each fixed connection should be one. Then we transfer the fixed end moment. A side zero because it's a pin support. And BA positive nine. BC negative 24. CB positive 24. CD zero. CE negative six, EC positive six, D zero. After that, we'll find unbalanced moment at approximation joint. So unbalanced moment is 15 right here. And unbalanced moment at joint C is 18 
at B is negative 50. Okay, so it's 9 plus, plus negative 24 and get negative 15. And at C, we have 24 plus 0 minus 6, get positive 18. And balance the moment. Then we will transfer the unbalanced moment to each member based on relative, dis relative stiffness of each member. The first round distribution. Okay? So we will use the unbalanced moment and take the negative sign. So we'll use the unbalanced moment right here. So when we do the unbalanced moment, we take the negative sign. So we'll use positive. So take a negative, negative 15 times the distribution factor of each member, 0 0.627. and equals to 9.4. And use negative, negative 15 times the distribution factor of, of BC equals to 0 0.373 and get the distribution moment equals to 5.6. At drum C, the unbalanced moment is positive 18. Then we will take negative 18 times the distribution factor of each member. And for CB, we get negative 4.09. And member CD, we take the unbalanced moment, negative sign, negative 18 times 0.319 and get distribution moment equals to negative 5.74. And for CE, we take negative 18 times 0.454 and get negative 8.17. This is the first round distribution. The distribution distribution only occur at approximation joint. So after first round distribution, we will take a look at the member, the other side. If the other side is fixed, we need to carry over one half of the distribution moment to the other end. And for member AB and BA, we notice that member BA the A end is pinned, so no carryover. Then we for BC and CB, BC and CB, the end, the far end is fixed. So we need to carry over the moment to the other side. So it means that this 5.6 for member BC will carry over to the C side. So we take 5.6 times one half. equals to 2.8. And for CB, if they see the distribution moment, if C sees distribution moment, it will transfer to the B end because B end is also fixed. So we have the carryover negative 4.09 times one half and get negative 2.05. Then we take a look at member CD. And if moment at C is won't transfer to the other end because D side is a pin. So CD won't transfer any moment. Then we move to member CE. And member CE, we find that E side is fixed means that if there is a moment transfer to C side, it will transfer to the E side 
by half of those. So we have this carryover, negative 8.17 times one half, and equals to negative 4.09. So after we do the carryover, as it will generate additional unbalanced moment, whenever you do the distribution, means that you already balanced the moment. But if there's a carryover, there's additional newly generated unbalanced moment, then we need to do the second round distribution. And second round distribution, the unbalanced moment is just based on the carryover moment. Then we will take the unbalanced moment at B. You can see here at B, we only have this negative 2.05. Then we will take negative, negative 2.05 times the distribution factor of each member and do the second round distribution and equals to 1.29. Then we take 2.05 and times 3.73 and get 0.76. Then at B, at C joint, we have the newly unbalanced moment, 2.8. So we'll take negative 2.8 times the distribution factor of each member connect at C. And for CB, negative 2.8 times 0.227 and get negative 0.64. Member CD, negative 2.8 times 0 0.319 and get negative 0 0.89. Member CE, negative 2.8 times the distribution factor 0 0.454 and get the newly distributed moment negative 1.27. Then this is the second round distribution. After that, we'll follow another round of carryover. So BC and CB carry over one half. This is 0.76 times one half to the C end equals to 0.38. And for CB, C and C.64, negative 0.64, and transfer one half to the B end, negative 0.32. C side, CE to the E side, negative 1.27 and times one half, and equals to negative 0.64. That's the second round of carryover. So after that, we'll generate newly unbalanced moment. And now you can take a look, the new unbalanced moment is much smaller than the original. The original is 15, negative 15. Now is negative 0.32. And at C, the original is positive 18, and current unbalanced moment is 0.38. And whenever we see the new unbalanced moment is small enough, and we can stop distribute. And so currently, I noticed the unbalanced moment is small, so very small. And usually, we take like within five percent of the first round unbalanced moment. And now I just do the final round distribution, then I will stop. Okay.
So the third round distribution equals to take the negative unbalanced moment. So we take negative, negative 0 0.32 and times the distribution factor 0 0.627 and get 0 0.2. And for member BC, we use 0 0.32 take negative sign, okay, 0 0.32 times distribution factor 0 0.373 and get 0 0.12. And at joint C, we take the new unbalanced moment, negative sign, negative 0.38 times the distribution factor of each member, CB is 0 0.227 and get the distribution moment 0 0.09. And member CD, negative 0.38 times 0 0.319. And get the new distribution moment, negative 0.12. And member CE, negative 0.38 times 0.454. And get a new distribution moment, negative 0.17. And after that, we notice the distribution moment is small enough and we can end the distribution, means that the accuracy is adequate. And usually we take the unbalanced moment, compare with the original unbalanced moment within 5%. After that, when we stop the distribution, now it's time to sum the moment. When we do the sum moment, we will do the moment, start from the fixed end moment and just do everything down. Sum the moment from fixed end moment. Okay, so we take every line, start from fixed end moment and do a sum. At A end, zero. And B end for BA, we have positive nine. Okay, so it's a positive nine plus 9.4 plus 1.29 plus 0.2. Everything in this line. Sum that and get a total equals to 19.9. Same thing for the BC, equals to negative 24 plus 5.6 minus 2.05 minus 0 0.32 plus 0 0.12 and get a total negative 19.9. And same thing for joint C. We can calculate everything from fixed end moment. So this is 24 minus 4.09 plus 2.8 minus 0.64. Just notice that I forgot here as positive 0 0.6, 0 0.76, another term. Okay. Then calculate everything. Just add every moment from fixed end moment. Then we get the moment at C equals to 22.4, positive, okay. And for CD, we calculate negative 5.74 minus 0.89 minus 0.12. So get a total negative 6.8. C, CE, 
and we get negative six minus 8.17 minus 1.27 minus 0.17 and get a total equals to negative 15.6 and e side we just use 6 minus minus 4.09 minus 0.64 and get a total 1.18 positive and decide is zero and we can do a quick check our goal our goal is at approximation joint and you will see the moment connect to the joint and we get a sigma moment at b balanced and if you see the moment at C, we get the moment at C balance 22.4 minus 6.8 minus 15.6. So means down with distribution. Okay. And this sum of the moment is our approach. approximation assumption moment distribution method is make assumptions of the moment at each joint so after we done with the moment distribution and we already calculate the moment at each joint so we can start from there now the structure already reduced to a statically determinate structure so we can start from there, use equations equilibrium to solve the problem. Okay. So now, the last step, we want to calculate. We want to find the shear moment diagram for BCE. Okay. According to this table, and we will transfer the moment to free body diagram of BCE. And first, we will do the, the moment free body diagram for BCE. We already have the moment BCE. So we will have um, member BC. Okay, so member BC at the B end, the moment is negative 19.9. Negative 19.9 at, at B, at B end, negative 19.9. Negative means counterclockwise. Okay. And for member C, CB at C side, the moment is positive 22.4. Means it's clockwise. Okay, so we use this 24.22.4. And for CE, Okay, so member CE and EC, the same member. On C side, we find the moment is negative 15.6. Negative means counterclockwise. Fifteen point six. On E side, positive 1.18 clockwise. We will transfer those moments at each joint to the free body diagram based on each member.
just already know our assumption. Okay, so I use those green color to represent the known value. And now we put unknown values that we don't know the shear force yet. I use the red pen to represent the unknown shear force. So when we do the unknown shear force, we assume positive shear force and the internal force sign convention shear left end, member left end up. So we have VB, we don't know. And red end down, positive shear. C is on the right side of BC. So we have BC, VC, just left of joint C. And for this problem, we are not interested in the axial load. So I just put the shear force as unknown force. And for member CE, the unknown force, shear at C. We put positive shear and just, just right of joint C. And E, right and down. That's the unknown force. And since we already make assumptions of moment, this structure already reduced to statically determined structure. And we are pretty confident that we just use the equations equilibrium to solve this unknown shear force. Then we can just use sum the moment at B equals to zero to solve VC minus. The remaining is all equations equilibrium. So we can sum the moment at B equals to zero and get okay. If we sum the moment at B, VB do not have moment contribution. Then this moment 19.9 has contribution. So if I assume when I, when I sum the moment equal to zero in this equation, if I assume this counterclockwise is positive, I just put 19.9 positive is counterclockwise, then minus 0.5 K per linear quad and times 24 and times 12 clockwise to negative sign and minus 22.4 clockwise and minus VC minus times 24 equals to zero. And solve for VC minus equals to negative 6.1 okay. Then sum the force in the y direction equal to zero for member BC. We get VB minus 0.5 keep per linear fault times 24 and minus VC minus minus 6.1 and equals to zero and get VB equals to positive 5.9. Then we move to member CE. And first, sum the moment at C equals to zero. And get 15.6 minus 0.5 K per linear foot times 12 times six minus 1.18 and minus BE times 12 equals to zero and get VE equals to negative 1.79. Then sum the force in the y direction equal to zero for member CE. We get VC 
just right of joint C minus 0.5 keep per linear fault times 12 and minus negative 1.79 equals to zero and get the shear just right joint C equals to positive 4.21. So after that, we can solve. We already solve all those shear force and put this on the shear free body diagram, 5.8, and just left of C, negative 6.1, and right of point C, we see equals to 4.8. 21k and VE equals to negative 1.79k. And after that, based on free body diagram, we can draw the shear diagram. We have two members, BC and CE. And refer to the free body diagram. First, identify the key points of shear diagram and has the beam end support. External load change location. Okay. And for BC segment, we have the positive 5.9 at B end. And just left of C. Negative 6.1. Connect these two points. Use the slope equals to uniform load magnitude. Straight line. And just the right of C, and we have CE, okay? Just the right of C is 4.21. And E side is negative 1.79. Connect this two point, use the uniform load. Street law. And this is the shear diagram. After we get shear diagram, we can draw the moment diagram. According to the free body diagram and the moment distribution table, we already identify the moment at each joint. Okay. And the key point for the moment has the beam end support as well as shear equals to zero point. those the key point possibly have the maximum moment. Then we need to identify the location. In order to calculate the location, now we have this x equals to 5.9 divided by 0.5 key per linear fault. And this location equals to 11.8. Then we want to calculate the moment, the location of V equals to zero point at member CE. And this X equals to 4.21 divided by 0.5. And 0.5 is the uniform load magnitude, and we get this x equals to 8.42.
So after we identify those locations, we can calculate the moment at those points. So currently, we already know the moment at B. The moment at B equals to 19.9, top intention. So the moment at B follow the internal load sun convention. Top intention is negative 19.9. Internal force, sun convention. And for C, just the left of C, we have 24, 22.4. So top intention means negative, negative 22.4 kick feet. Just the right of C, also top intention, 15.6. Negative 15.6 because the top intention and E negative 1.18. Negative means top intention. Okay, so internal force. Positive moment means bottom intention. Negative moment is top intention. Okay. After we identify those key point at the joint, now we want to calculate the moment at v equal to zero point. And at this location, the moment equals to MB plus the area of shear diagram from B to location v equal to zero point. So equals to one half times 5.9 times 11.8. Then we find the moment equals to 14.9, positive. And for moment at a second shear equal to zero point, we will use just right of C, use 15.6 plus the area of shear diagram. So we get MC plus plus one half times 4.21 and times 8.42 feet. And this equals to negative 15.6 plus one half times 4.12 and times 8.42. Then we get the value equals to 2.1 kip feet. After identify those, all those key points, now we can connect those points from B to shear equal to zero point and slope start at 5.9 and at zero. So it's a second order curve. And from shear equal to zero point to negative 6.1. second order curve and straight line from 22.4 to 15.6. And after that, just write a support C. 
start slope 4.21 and end at zero. Second order curve. And then start zero and end at 1.79. And this is the moment diagram. Now, we're done with this example.